The first one up here is a three-way Spider-Man. So this is three different stretches. The first one here, you're going to be kneeling on the ground. Put your hands to the side and rock your body forward. Your goal here with this is to be able to get the thigh and the calf contacting each other. So you're going to shift forward to try to reach a point where your thigh and calf contact each other. Research has been shown that if you can get to this point in time, it actually decompresses the knee area and it reduces a lot of the compression at the knee. So it's super helpful for your knee. You'll also feel a good hip stretch out of it. Second to that is you're going to put your foot flat back on the ground and you're going to rotate your hand up towards the ceiling to get a little bit of rotation through your hips and mid back. Um, so that's level one, level two. A more advanced version of it is if you lift the knee up off the ground as shown, doing the first version and the second version here of the Spider-Man where you rotate up. This just adds a little bit more load to it by having the back knee up off the ground. Um, so only do that as you're comfortable. The third and final of the three-way Spider-Man is if you push your hips up towards the ceiling and try to straighten out that front knee, you're going to try to push your hips up vertically and then hold that position for the desired time period of 20 seconds. After that, we're going to go into a down dog position while we walk our knees and ankles back and forth. Usually do this for 20 seconds or 20 reps on each leg. You'll feel a nice stretch running through the back of your thighs with this one. Then we're going to drop down onto our elbows, one leg back, one knee bent, and we're going to reach our sternum up towards the ceiling. So we're trying to achieve a flat back here, sternum stays parallel with the floor, reach through those arms like you're doing a plank and push up towards the ceiling. You should feel a little bit of a stretch through the upper back with this one. Hold this position, do about three breaths in each position, both knees flexed up and down, and then repeat on either side, 20 seconds total or three to four breaths holding that position. Now we're going to move on to tabletop rotations. You're going to lay on your side, one hand posted up, the other leg straight, and rotate back and forth. So you're just flossing your leg through to either side. Once that becomes easy for you, which it should fairly quickly, you should not get any pain in the front of your shoulder, you're going to move to a tabletop bridge where you lift your hips up off the ground. You're going to require more shoulder stability, more shoulder range of motion at this point in time. Again, no pain pinpoint in the front of the shoulder. You should just feel a general stretch in the chest and the scapula or your shoulder blade helping stabilize you. Um, with your back arm. Depending on your strength level, you're going to hold that for anywhere between 5 seconds to 20 seconds. Again, you should never be pushing through pain with any of these activities. Following the tabletop bridge, we're going to move on to the couch stretch. This requires a table or a bench or a couch, something to put your back foot up on. You're going to kneel on the floor. The easiest version of this is hands down on the ground. You're going to feel a stretch running through your thigh. If you need a pillow or a pad, something underneath the knee to make it more comfortable, go, so, go ahead and do so. If this is easy for you, then the next step up is hands on the opposite knee, holding that position and stretching in that position. Again, do not force this position by jamming your hips forward and arching your back. If this is easy for you and you don't feel much of a stretch, likely you have enough flexibility through that area where it's not necessary. Again, same thing holds true for all of these stretches. If you're not feeling a stretch in any particular area and it feels easy to achieve that position, don't waste your time with it. Move on. Do not force the stretch and try to force yourself into positions just for the sake of trying to stretch further or more aggressively. After this series, we're going to move into our lat stretch and tricep stretch. This one takes that bench again or the couch that you're using at home. We're going to start by kneeling and you're going to start by bending your elbows maximally. Bending the elbows maximally first is key so that you get a stretch through the tricep and then keeping your back flat, you're going to sink your hips back towards the heels. So again, bend the elbows maximally, sink your hips back through, that's going to get your triceps first and then your lats, you should not feel any pinpoint pain in the front of your shoulder, you should feel a general stretch through your armpit region, there's no need to force your chest past parallel with the floor or jam your chest down any further. If you look at this video from a side view, you see that my shoulders are just about in line with my ear. If you can get your shoulders in line with the ear, that's about as far as you need to go with this. You don't need to go any further. 
into positions that we cannot control. So there's no need to force extreme outer range of motion with any of these stretches. Next up is a standing toe touch with the toes elevated to really stretch the spine, hamstrings, and calves especially. You're going to put your feet up on a slant board and then bend over, try to touch your toes, hold this position while keeping your knees fairly straight. You don't have to lock them out, fairly straight. Hold it for anywhere between 10 and 30 seconds and then repeat the opposite way around where your heels are elevated and your toes are pointed downward uh, and same thing, holding for 10 to 30 seconds total, breathing comfortably in this position. You don't have to have a slant board, a two by four or a squat rack in the gym, anything to literally elevate the heels and elevate the toes will work just fine for this exercise and activity. Again, no pain should be uh, no pain should be occurring here. And if you can touch your toes, that's about as far as you need to go. If you're not feeling any tension within your hamstrings or calves at that moment in time, and you can palm the floor, you have plenty of range of motion, and you don't need to force it any further. For those who are really, really limited or restricted, what you can use is a box, a bench, or in a stairway, one of the stairs, first or second steps to put your hands on and that way you don't have to go down all the way and then again you're going to walk the knees back and forth uh, one leg after the other uh, and do about 10 to 15 each side as a replacement until you get comfortable doing it on the slant board. Finally the last exercise that we have or the last stretch we have is a full body bar hang uh, the idea behind this is you're using a pull-up bar to really extend and elongate the body from the shoulders, from the spine, from the hips. So we want to try to be hanging from the bar and hanging straight down. We don't want to be arching the back, so you should not see the ribs flaring and your back arching. You should just feel traction going through your shoulders, traction going through your spine, and traction going through the hips. Now, depending on if you have a bar or a pull-up bar that's high enough, you might have to bend your knees uh, a little bit if the bar is super low you might have to bend the knees and keep the feet flat in the ground but again we want a flat back so you're sinking your hips straight down if you don't have a pull-up bar and you're at home you can use a door frame and you'd actually just push your hands straight up vertically into the door door frame reaching up towards the sky and trying to elongate the body as best that you can uh, again depending on your height that door frame may be just perfect for you or it may be a little bit too short if you're really tall um, you'd have to find something a little bit differently or you can just stand and, and reach really really long and do it that way you'll also notice with this exercise when we're hanging our hands are in a mixed grip position so one palm is facing towards the camera the other palm is facing away from the camera you'll do it that way hold for 10 to 20 seconds and then repeat with the opposite hand grip all right, so here's your recap with all of the exercises. Take a screenshot of this for your reference as you need it. Come back to the video as you need to to look over the exercises again to make sure your technique is down. But again, never push through pain. Motion is never forced, and we do not fear movement either.